Durban Saddam and his bomb party will have bitten the dust. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. It is said that history is written by the victors, but there are many who would tell a very different version of events. Who you choose to believe is ultimately up to you. inspectors Rolf Achaeus is in Iraq today to confront the regime about the alleged manufacture of deadly germ warfare agents. Achaeus reported encouraging progress concerning Iraqi chemical weapons and arms controls. However, he said that on the subject of biological weapons, progress was, quote, less satisfactory. This story starts on the 28th of April, 1995. It was a day I will always remember. Why? because it was my father's 58th birthday. The Iraqi government is cooperating fully with the weapons inspectors from the I'd UN. been married young, at 15 in fact, to my cousin Hussein Kamal. He'd now risen to the rank of the Minister of Military Industry. US conspiracy designed to perpetuate the sanctions Don't you look handsome? <laughs> I was proud of him, and we were very happy. I had a lovely home and five beautiful children. The early 90s had been difficult for all of us, but my father had managed to keep the country together. It didn't always feel like there was a great deal to celebrate. My father's birthday was a special occasion. On that day, the country would erupt into massive, spontaneous celebrations. However busy he was with affairs of state, my father always held a family party. He loved a good party. Thank yes. you. Happy, Happy birthday. Well, what do you think? Our diet's going well. I've lost five pounds. And you? Uh, two and a half. I win. As always. I was the eldest daughter, and everyone knew I was his favorite. I adored him. Come and see. Plans to build the biggest mosque in the world, with minarets taller than the Eiffel Tower in France. Very impressive. Better be. It's costing me a fortune. People accuse me of extravagance. Why is Saddam building palaces while his people starve? When Nebuchadnezzar was conquering Jerusalem, was he bothering about how much bread his people were eating? No. That's right, Ali, because a great Babylonian ruler has bigger things in his mind. Like building a civilization. The whole country referred to him as Saddam, our father. To me, too, he was never anything but a caring and dedicated father. But it can be difficult for the children of such an extraordinary man to step out from his shadow. Hey, what the hell are you doing there? Shut up. What are you doing? Go, go! You have no right! My eldest brother, Uday, was his son and heir. He had shown great promise academically and received a degree from Baghdad University. He could have had a successful career as an engineer. Do you know I am? Yes, Your Excellency. Then you know I have every right. But he was keen to follow my father into politics. You're a good boy. 
right to have picked me up. New suit? Yeah. You look very smart. You make your father proud. As a child, he'd been self-conscious of his speech impediment. It's your father's birthday. Be good. I hate these dudes. It's not right to And it was my mother who'd encouraged and protected him. I hate my father sometimes. No. You love your father. I don't. You must. In your Aksadam is the sun. When you're out of his gaze, you're in the dark. Trust me, I know. At my mother's urging, my father had recently made him chairman of the Olympic Committee. But Uday wanted to be made a minister in government. <laughs> my sister Rana was married to my husband's brother, Saddam Kamal, head of my father's personal security. Rana got on better with my mother than I. A little fuller in the face, maybe. She's hardly big, Yama. No, <laughs> but you mustn't let yourself go. Happy birthday, Wouldn't like Yama. to lose your place. It's your father's Go plate it. So I see. It fires and everything. I had it specially. My husband was my father's most trusted general. And after my father, the second most powerful man in Iraq. Come on, everyone. Photograph. Not bad for a farm boy from Tikrit. Charming, not even hello, how are you? Children, tell Rana to hurry up. Auntie Rana, hurry up. Come on. Yeah, yes, next to your sister, Ragad. Not next to me, not in that colour. <laughs> Put her next to Uday. I don't want to stand next to Uday. He'll make me look fat and short. You look fat and short, whatever. <laughs> my daughters are the loveliest of all my children, all of them. Even you, Rana. Nothing is more important than family. Always remember that. All right, everyone. <laughs> Smile. We were an ideal family. How could that ever change? Double action should be 15 twice. rounds of ammo in the magazine. See, like this. Mm. Uday, what are you doing? I'm just teaching the kid how to shoot. Well, don't. Not at the table. Hmm? It's not nice. She has to learn sometime. If the son has no memory of the sweet scent of the father, then something is taken away from the love the son has for the father. When I was your age, Dad used to let me shoot the prisoners. Hmm? Would you like that? Uday, leave him alone. <laughs> Look at him in that get-up, huh? With that hell. What does he look like? My sister told you to leave our son alone. Good day's right. We should educate the boy. Top him up. Do him good. And if a woman can't afford toothpaste or toothpaste... My father always said I was the wisest of his children. But as a woman, I had no place in politics. Key government posts were given to the men of the tribe, his extended family. My uncle Watban was minister of the interior. This little tart, she's standing there, she's going, you remind me of my father, same moustache. My other brother, Kuse, very much looked up to Uday, to whom he was incredibly loyal. He would stand up when Uday entered a room. So that's what you were up to when the latest car bomb went off. <laughs> we're dealing with Aldo, I, Excellency. How? By going out whoring. Are you interrogating them? Strenuously. And not strenuously enough, you donkey. You got nothing out of them. I won't be called a donkey by you. What do you know? You don't even have your own ministry. You do a lot of strategic thinking down at the Olympic Committee, do you? <laughs> what colour will our beloved national football team be wearing this season? <laughs> you know, we already know the Iranians are backing al -Dawar. So, execute them all. Show them Iraq won't bow to this pressure. I told the Americans, I told the British, and now I'm telling you, unless we wake up and act, terrorism will be the great cancer for the next century. General Kamel, your brother-in-law Uday has uh, paid us a visit. He's taken the latest delivery. All of it. So the foreman says, what do you want me to do? 
For now, nothing. Tell the foreman to stay where he is, and I'll meet you there in an hour. Shias in the south, Kurds in the north, Sunnis in the middle, tribes against tribes. But one supreme leader. I'm holding this country together with my fists. Everything okay? Fine, just ministry business. Well, no trouble, I hope. Nothing I can't handle. Always working. How was your meeting with the inspectors? Do they still think we have chemical weapons hidden away? Uh, as you know, Your Excellency, what the Americans didn't manage to bomb in 91, we have subsequently destroyed ourselves. But I am not going to tell them that yet. Excellent. Yeah, meanwhile, the country's being crippled. If we have destroyed all our weapons, why not tell the UN now? <laughs> we have a lot of enemies, Kusei. Never reveal anything you don't have to. As you always say, Your Excellency, the better part of war is deception. Good! Excellency. Good night, my boy. Happy birthday again. Happy birthday, my president. Happy birthday. Bad bon. Good night. Good night. You say? Good night, Father. Good day. All these crooks get ministry to make a mess of everything. I'm better than them. When do I get my ministry? When I will it. Hossein Kumail gets a huge budget and all the firepower he can lay his hands on. I like him. He's a man of ideas, a builder like me. He's thirsty for power. He wants what's mine, but I'll fight him. I will never stop. Of course you won't. That's how I raised you, boy. You can't trust a man who doesn't wink or smoke. It's weird. <laughs> There's no man I trust more. But why him? Why not me? Because he's loyal, he doesn't flaunt his wealth, and he knows battle. Men respect him. He built the Republican Guard from nothing. And what's more, he's given me grandchildren. <laughs> of course there were tensions. There always are in families with so many talented and ambitious individuals. I had a wonderful husband who worked tirelessly for my father and our country. And as far as I was aware, there was nothing to worry about. What are you going to do? There's nothing I can do. Jordanians are expecting delivery tomorrow. What do you suggest I do? Go to the president and complain that his son stole from me, the petrol I stole from him. Excellency. So, how are you feeling? Uh, I'll be OK. Mm -hmm. Just some bruising. Um, there's nothing I could do. No, of course not. He's the president's son. The thing I don't understand is how he knew it was here. Stop. I understand you wanted to please Uday. He can be a very persuasive man. Again. I swear, but just please. Please, please. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you. Let's go. I remember it so well, my father's 58th birthday. As the whole country celebrated with us, I thought how lucky I was to be part of such a wonderful family. I had loving brothers and sisters. Have you missed anything? We'd have done anything for each other. a caring father who was an inspiration to us all. I had a devoted husband. After nearly 15 years of marriage, we were still very much in love. Good party. 
Alright. Right. Little did I know that that would be the last day we'd spend together as a happy family. My father had always surrounded himself with family. But in the end, it was those closest to him, those he trusted the most, who would betray him. And we'd see our world fall apart. The opposition to Saddam Hussein was growing, but after a recent bomb attack in Baghdad, they have issued rare press visas to accuse their Iranian neighbors of a blatant act of aggression. A very powerful bomb went off. Uh, it was planted and detonated by remote control so that it destroyed one of the cars belonging to the Iranian Mujahideen. The bombings come after a wave of arrests in Shia areas, where support for opposition groups like al Dawa is thought to be growing in strength. What are you doing? Iraqi security services report they have a... Unfortunately... You know you're not allowed to watch TV at this time of night. Now, come on. Why did Grandad arrest the Shias? You shouldn't listen to American propaganda. Now, come on. What is propaganda? Lies. Shall I read you a story? Yes. My father was so misunderstood. He was doing what he had to to hold the country together. He faced enemies on all sides. Open your eyes! <laughs> Meanwhile, the American aggressors sent their spies, the UN inspectors, depriving our country of its right to defend itself with suitably effective weaponry. The people, the families we found lying all around had not been injured. They'd been poisoned by chemical bombs and shells containing cyanide, mustard, and other nerve gases. Iraqi oil exports used to bring in $13 billion a year. I know, I'm the minister in charge of oil exports. There was only one man he could trust with keeping the American inspectors at bay. My husband. You tell the Americans, tell them to lift the sanctions. They are the ones killing Iraqi children, not me. The UN wants proof. You now have our full and final disclosure. We have no capability left. Can the UN justify these sanctions? We will take a look at these. Thank you. My husband was not only a decorated general, but a highly skilled diplomat. General Hussein Kamal Al Majid, Taras Rabinovich. Afternoon, General. Good afternoon. You have everything we talked about? Yes, everything. We can provide free key fuses with them. And the RPG-7? It will penetrate 150 millimeter of armor plate. Hmm. I will also give you 50,000 AKs for the price we agreed. Very good, then. For $10 million, you have yourself a deal. The president will be delighted. Excellent. It is always good to do business with you. As a token of my company's thanks. Hussein was from a humble family. He was a respectable, self-made man. Ukrainian vodka, best in the world. Yes, why not? Nastrovia. Nastrovia. Excellency, the Ukrainian delegation has just left. So, what did you settle on? 10,000 RPGs, 20,000 artillery fuses, 50 anti-aircraft guns with 250,000 cartridges, and they even threw in 50,000 AKs as well. I think you're going to be rather pleased with the price. 15 million. Sounds like a good deal. Yes, I thought it was something of a bargain, too. Well done, Hussein. I do it all for you. Excellency. 
I want you to go to Amman tonight and pay that into my account with the Central Gulf Bank. I won't give you any trouble at the border. Yes, General. As a young soldier, Hussein had served as my father's personal bodyguard. My president? On one occasion, he threw himself in front of an assassin's bullet to protect my father. Unfortunately, not all the members of the tribe were men of such high caliber. The Minister of the Interior, Your Excellency. Make sure we're not disturbed. Yes, Your Excellency. What, Bart? My president, I have terrific news. We liquidated the key members of the Al Dawah terrorist. Faisal. My father's half-brothers in particular were a source of great frustration. No interruptions. Not by anyone. What are you playing at? Another Aldawar car bomb yesterday. That's the fourth in as many weeks, what, Bud? Your Excellency, I'll assure you that it's... I want to see the President. His Excellency said he must not be disturbed. Move. I'm sorry, sir, but I've been given strict instructions. Don't you know who I am? Yes, sir. Your Excellency, I will not tolerate this! I demand total dedication! So many lies told about the incident involving my brother and the security officer. Give it to me. The truth was that my brother knew people like Watbaum were failing in their responsibilities. Sometimes Uday's frustrations got the better of him. What have you done? He showed no respect! Respect? Oh. What would you know about respect? <laughs> He was laughing at me! Because you're a joke! You've made a mockery of this family. No! You're an embarrassment to me! Yeah, but you just let me explain. I'm talking! You think you can do what you want? Behave like a pig? No! Butcher my stuff! Oh, I'm sorry! I'm sorry, it won't happen again! You disgust me. <laughs> I know what you're up to. Lining your pockets. Oh, what about Batman, huh? What about Hussein come out? Don't bring Hussein into this. Well, the same rules apply to him. He's right. right. damn it, you! <laughs> you don't know. You don't know what he really gets up to in that ministry of his. All oh, that money you give him. You want proof? No. I want you to clean your act up. If there's another incident like this, I'll have you shot. Yabba, yeah, please. Get out of my sight. United Nations inspectors left their base at the Palestine Hotel in Baghdad for the last time today. Speaking to reporters, Ralph Akeu said monitoring systems designed to spot Iraqi violations of the UN's disarmament demands were, quote, humming along satisfactorily. Progress has been made on weapons disclosures. It's my understanding that Iraq intends to comply with the yeah, UN demand. Little one. I wasn't expecting you. Is something the matter? Can't an old man pop in on his favorite child? It's I'll give more detail. I couldn't sleep my back. It's killing me. <laughs> Have you seen a doctor? Doctors are like wives. All they do is nag. Ah, the same. Excellency, to what do we owe the honor? Friendly visit, a social call. Well, please, sir, come in. Do you want some tea? Something to eat? Hmm, something sweet, like you, my little one. Now, leave the men to talk.
inspectors suspect everything. That's their job. But they can't prove anything. Good. When the UN lift the sanctions and the oil money starts flowing again, I want to rebuild our strategic capabilities bigger and better than before. We will be the Arab superpower once again, Your Excellency. If only I had more like you. What's he so afraid of, do you think? He's in awe of you, Excellency. People with a clear conscience have nothing to be scared of. Do you trust your servants, Hussein? Yes. I've had them all a long time. Doesn't mean you can trust them. One of my valets, with me for years, was caught stealing soap from one of the palace bathrooms, caught red-handed. His mother came to plead his case, told me his children were getting ill because they couldn't keep clean eating with dirty hands. Blame the sanctions. I said, couldn't you have used water? May do. You can live without scented soap, surely. What did you do with him? What I do with all servants who steal from me. I had him hanged and made sure all the other servants watched. But what really pained me was that this man whom I had trusted could betray me. <laughs> Ah, that's my little general. He wanted to see you. <laughs> Can I ride on your back, Grandad? Oh, you're far too big for that now. Oh, please. Uh, I'm far too old. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you know the best quality a leader can have? The ability to be harsh with those closest to him. Those he loves the most. Now, I really must go. Oh. 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 Say goodnight to Grandpa. Good night, Grandad. Good night, Arlene. Good night to Mama. Good night. Good night, Excellency. Good night. It's late and I've kept you up. Forgive me. Children need their sleep. It's fine. It's good to see you. Is everything all right, Yabba? Yes, yes. Just this blasted back of mine. I'll see my doctor in the morning. Don't you worry about it. If my husband had a problem, he'd deal with it himself. He wasn't the kind of man who would burden others with his worries. Well? Who knows? I wish he had told me about them. What the hell is going on? Come on, Faisal. The chairman is waiting for you. Come on. What's happening here? Position to say anything. What do you want? Me? I want you to do something for me. You can get lost. <laughs> Is that any way to speak in front of your daughter? Now, this is what I want you to do for me. My president, I can keep silent no longer. Well, go on. A week ago, the interior minister received an intelligence warning of yesterday's bombing in Baghdad. Well, what did my brother do? Well, the minister had a lot of uh, private business that day. So he did nothing? Nothing at all, Your Excellency. <laughs> the truth is, he's hardly ever at the Ministry. But that's not all. None of these intelligence reports have been acted upon. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a disgrace to your Ministry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, brother. Don't call me brother. 
I don't expect to be forgiven after a month or two. This is it. You've had all your chances. You'll never hold public office again. You're guilty of criminal neglect, total incompetence, ingratitude. You're lazy, you're idle, you don't care, you drink, you whore. You're a disgrace to your position and to this tribe. My son was right, you are a donkey. What am I going to do with you? You worm. Excellency. Get out. My father used to say that when you're training a puppy, you can hit it and punish it in various ways, and it will eventually learn. But when a dog grows big and strong, you have to think twice about punishing it. It might bite you. Good morning, Excellency. My boy. Hmm. I've had to reshuffle the cabinet. I have something in mind for you. <laughs> Every year in August, we celebrate the Day of Days. This is in remembrance of our victory over Iran in the Eight Year War. The war cost us dearly. 375,000 valiant Iraqi lives. But it was a matter of national honor, and some battles must be fought for pride's sake. To the main city square. We have two routes for your appearance, and as usual, we will choose a new third route before setting off, which we will change mid-journey. Good. The next item on my agenda concerns my beloved son, Uday. As head of the Olympic Committee, he does not have a place at this table. I have therefore decided to create a new ministry, the Department for Military and Industrial Repairs. I'm sure everyone will agree he has earned a post in government. Excuse me, Excellency, but uh, you said Uday will be Minister for Military and Industrial Repairs? That's right. I'm sorry, Excellency. What exactly would be the remit of this ministry? He'd supervise the budgets and repair of military and industrial equipment. Furthermore... So he would need access to accounts and inventories of other ministries? Yes. Is that a problem? No. Uday is uh, inexperienced. <laughs> He'll learn on the job. Forgive me, Excellency. He doesn't have the. Doesn't have the what? Uday has not yet proven he is capable of running a football team, let alone a ministry. <laughs> Your objection has been noted, Minister for Military Industry, but as far as I'm aware, I'm still the president and the decision is mine. trying to get us killed. No one defies the president, no one. Not even you. Listen to me. <clears throat> if I need you, will you be with me? You're my brother. Of course I will. Good. <clears throat> family, we were guests of honor at a military banquet. 
Preparing for those evening's festivities, I had no idea that my family would soon be at war again, but this time with itself. Are you ready? I'm not in the mood. We have to go. You want to mess with me? Disrespecting me to my father in front of the council! Go home, sober up! You want to go to war with me? Stop it! Is that what you want? Both of you! <laughs> Ragad, what will I do to your husband? Hudayna! Hudayna! Is this how a real man fights? Looks like your little boy is more of a man than you are, Hussein. <laughs> but you can't hide behind your wife and kids anymore. said something, something I shouldn't have. Then what? Saddam's given Uday a ministry. I question his decision. Why? Why? Because it will make life impossible for me. You have to go to my father. Tell him what happened. That won't do any good. Do you think Uday will leave it like this? When he hears what Uday's it's done... It's too late for that. Uday attacks Saddam you! Saddam won't control Uday. He can't. He created this monster and now it's out of his hands. We have to go now. Go. Where? Aman. For how long? Look, just a few weeks, a month, nothing more. Ayesha! How is this going to look to my father? To leave in the middle of the night like a gang of fugitives? We don't have any choice. Now, all that matters is that you and the children are safe. Now, help Ayesha and go and get them up. Hussein! I have to call my brother. invited you anyway. I came to see how you're getting on, Uncle. <laughs> how with retirement? I'm not retiring, you punk. Is that any way to talk to a government minister? You'll mess it up, just like everything else. Now, this is a private party, so get on out of it. Come on, baby. You'll only disappoint you. Ask his wife. Now! Yep. Now! I'm not just some palace guard. You think your father will forgive you if you kill his own brother? Hey! Now you're 
Mama dies. Whether my husband was right or wrong, I knew he had to apologize to my father. I knew my sister and his brother were scared too, but surely together we could make him put this right. presidential family and we aim to serve our country and the Iraqis are aware of this. That is on TV. Leaving Iraq was not a spontaneous decision. It took some time and much thought and must now be accompanied by radical action. We hope to change the regime whose wrong approach is leading to the What's collapse happening? of Iraq. It seems we just defected. I was formerly the Minister for Military Industry and also in charge of five other ministries. Yes. I intend to lead a new government. When was this? I see. We could have stayed in Iraq, but outside of government. But instead, we have chosen to flee Iraq with the intention of... When the King of Jordan granted us asylum, I was hoping for a period of calm. But instead, I found myself in the eye of an international storm. We fear the outbreak of civil war. With one speech, Hussein had made himself an enemy of the state. Savage regime and my father faced his worst political crisis since Kuwait. It was clear that those powers that had tried to oust my father would take full advantage of the situation. Imagine the no-fly zone was designed to do one thing and one thing only, to increase our capacity to monitor and to limit his ability to threaten his neighbors in light of his increased aggressiveness. Ridiculous. Why can't I speak with Baghdad? On whose instructions exactly? Let me speak to the head of palace security. Did you do this? They won't put me through to Baghdad. Robert, would you take my guests next door? I won't be a moment. What the hell is going on? You told me we were lying low. Now you make Listen this, this announcement to the world that you're what? That you're going to overthrow my father? Are you insane? I couldn't tell you. You'd never have come. No, you're right. I wouldn't have. How could you do this to him? You owe my father everything. 
Saddam can't see what's going on anymore. He is dragging our country back to the Stone Age, surrounding himself with incompetence and psychopaths. Your brother will keep clawing more and more power, and when he takes over, what future does Iraq yes, so have then? So instead, you expect to go rolling back to Baghdad triumphant, the new glorious leader. Republican Guard are my men. They'll be behind me. The Americans will back. The Americans. Iraq needs me. I am the only one who can unite the tribes. He'd be herding goats if it wasn't for my father. You ran away from him like a coward, and now you're stabbing him in the back. Well, I want nothing to do with this. Do not walk away from me, Regard. Did you forget who you married? Your loyalty is to me, your husband. For now, you will stay here, and you will get manicures and watch videos and give me no trouble. Understand? I make the decisions. Excellency, the UN team are ready for your debriefing. I'll be there as soon as I finish my interview. It is requested that you go by the back corridor, so as to avoid the media at the front of the palace. As you wish. I need to get some things from the shops. We're very happy to bring you anything you need. Just write it down. His Majesty wants you to feel at home. My father will think I betrayed him too. Don't try and make any more calls. I was caught between two fires, the fire of my husband and the fire of my father. I knew this betrayal would have been all the worse coming from the daughters he so adored. with authority. I'm all you've got left. I can do it. Put your faith in me. No. Then no. It's time to get Eliasa and Al-Majid out of retirement. Go. Go. Kusei, any word on Uday? Still missing. I'm working on it. You're a good boy. I need you here. I understand. I'm told my father refused to discuss anything but our return, even while the campaign to oust him was building momentum. So while you destroyed existing chemical, biological, and long-range weapons, you retained the designs and engineering details so they can be built at a future date? Yes. We hid the blueprints, computer disks, microfiches, all materials that would help us restart the weapons program as soon as we could. So all those months, years of visits to Iraq, all those inspections, all those meetings, you were lying to the UN. No, I was not lying to you, Saddam was. I was simply following his instructions. And now what? A new order. With you at the head? Yes. I see. Do you doubt the quality of the information that he uh, has passed on? Does it suggest to you that maybe he was allowed to leave so that he could somehow uh, provide disinformation to the West? I don't think anyone's thinking that this was some kind of grand plot by Saddam to wants it to, uh, to fool us uh, in the West. He's not in a very strong position to do that anyway because uh, he's fairly weak. Kusei, come in, come in. What can I do? With my husband's defection, the shortcomings of my father's remaining lieutenants became apparent. The president asked for me personally. Yes. That is a great honor. Ali Hassan had fallen out of favor with my father and had been retired on grounds of ill health. He was a difficult individual with a black history. The West knew him as Chemical Ali, 
and blamed him for gassing the Kurds in Halabja. When I heard he'd been sent to get us, I admit, I was scared. What about the president's daughters? The king wants to assure President Saddam that he will keep the girls as safe as if they were his own daughters. But the negotiations didn't go well. My brother had insisted on accompanying him. I would need to ask the king, and sadly, he's not Where's my sister? Okay, that's enough! I told you, sir, I can't divulge that information! We can burn out, and we'll tear this place apart till we find them! Show these gentlemen out. This way, please. And neither of them possessed my husband's strategic or diplomatic skills. The Jordanians refused to hand us over. Rumors circulated that my father had not slept or eaten for days. All government business had ground to a halt. I need to hear Dad's voice, but they won't put you me have through. To pull they yourself keep together. Me up here like animals. Saddam won't tell me what's going on. I ask him all the time. I ask him when we can go home. Rana, Just listen to me. Can... Listen to me. We're not going home. What's going to happen to us? I don't know. Dad will never get over this. The UN inspectors are demanding to be allowed back in to carry on their search. If we refuse, there's no telling how the international community will respond. Yeah, but what do you want me to do? Let them in. You sure? Even when they won't reveal exactly how much Hussein Kamal's told them? Let them in. Hammonds have still got away with betraying us. Not yet. My father told us that it's only when a man faces such impossible odds that he discovers what he's made of. It's impossible that you could be so stupid as to buy this. Can't you see what they've done? You've got to understand how it looks, General Kamal. Saddam's men led us to a farm, your farm. They showed us crates of documents we've been looking for for years. And now they're saying none of it was officially sanctioned. It was all you're doing without the permission of the president. Yes, of course they'd say that. You know how they work. This was an exhibition for the UN's benefit. They planted this stuff there. Give me one good reason why the UN should believe you. Oh, you would believe Saddam over me? It's your word against theirs. And you've both shown you can't be trusted. Now, I need to know if you have anything else. Anything else? Do you have anything I can take back to the UN in New York? Saddam did once talk about a plan to invade Saudi Arabia. Today, President Saddam Hussein's government staged a comeback after the damage done by the defection of key members of the regime last week. Good night, Father. His son, Lord General Hussein Kamal Al Majid, Go to bed, Ali. was known I'll to have masterminded minute. Iraq's weapons of mass destruction program, and it was thought likely that after his defection, he would cooperate with UN inspectors and reveal all he knew. But now, the Iraqi government alleges that General Hussein Kamal had been acting without authorization. A spokesman announced today that General Kamal had embezzled ministry funds to build up a private weapons program concealed from both UN inspectors and his own president Saddam Hussein he said it has come as a total shock to the Iraqi president who has not been seen in public since the defection of his two daughters and their husbands the president why did I see this coming Hussein Kamal had stolen ministry
because you're not as clever as him. What the Americans have never understood, and what my husband should have remembered, is that when my father appears at his weakest, that is when you should fear him the most. Four months after my husband felt he'd been abandoned by the Americans, he'd become hugely frustrated that he could no longer help the homeland he so loved. He was supposed to be here four hours ago. I got held up. What is more important than interviewing me? Well, you do the drink. I don't drink. Maybe you should sit. The world needs to know what is going on in Iraq. The corruption, the mass killings. Anyone who opposes the government or the family is kidnapped, tortured. And where were you when all this torture and corruption was going on? Right at the center. I had no choice. Are you going to write this story or not? Depends. What have you got? I am forming a new opposition group to be called the Higher Council for the Salvation of Iraq. We renounce foreign aid, and after the overthrow of Saddam Hussein, we promise elections, but not federalism. We My newspaper has got no interest in this. There was a brief moment when we thought you had some credibility. I can unite Iraq. Saddam's finished. You don't understand. To the Sunnis, you're a traitor. To the Kurds, you're a mass murderer. And to the Shias, you're a heretic. The man who destroyed their holiest shrine and bragged about it. It's not Saddam that's finished, it's you! How dare he talk to me like that? How dare You can't behave like that! Why are you never on my side? I am on your side. I'm your wife. I love you. Do you? I'm still here. Why? I have failed you. Go to bed. He needed me. Whatever the circumstances, I would stand by my husband. It's the same within a tribe. What about my brother? Excellency. If one of them does something to offend the honor of the tribe, it becomes the responsibility of all of them. The doctor says your operation went well. <laughs> the fourth one, yes. He thinks I'll need further surgery. And did you punish who day yes? It was an accident. He sprayed the whole room with bullets. Are you saying it was a murder attempt? <laughs> well, what would you call it? Well, I'd call it an accident. He tried to kill me. A terrible accident. If it was anything else, that wouldn't be very bad. Very bad indeed. Perhaps you're right. Stupid accident. Family is very dear to me. And in these troubled times, we must all stick together. Who say you were peaceful? Don't you? Good day, my boy. It's good that you've come to see him at last. What are you doing? Wattbun's very upset. He feels you owe him reparation. 
Preparation. Give him the gun and let him shoot you in the leg where you shot him. But... When, but... Do it. An eye for an eye. Your uncle, an eye for an eye. It was an accident. A terrible accident. My father loved his children. We heard that he was putting his house in order, that Uday had finally been spoken to. Eventually, he reached out to us too and sent word that he forgave us. When did this come? This morning. I told you. I knew Dad wouldn't desert us. Now we can go back. Has the Stain seen this? Yes. He thinks we should go. Something's not right. Why would Dad just let us go back like this? You know how much he values family. He will never forgive Hussein for this. Your husband knew what the plan was when we left Iraq. It's part of this too. Saddam will never leave Jordan now. Hussein won't go back without him. I need your help with this, Rana. We are choking here. 
every day the children ask us, when will we see Grandpa again? The journalist is pressing charges. Hussein could go to prison. I give you my word that you have my complete forgiveness and that you will not be persecuted when you return. I don't know. Can you be certain? Yes. <sighs> so, how are you finding your new accommodation? Is it to your liking? It is completely inadequate. The rooms are far too small. Unfortunately, your previous apartment is due for essential maintenance. It's a temporary measure. I want to see the king now. I'm very sorry. His Majesty can't see you. The king feels it would be inappropriate to see you before your forthcoming trial. This is an outrage. That man insulted me. Yes, that's as maybe. But here in Jordan, we have a rule of law. And the law must run its course. Excuse me, sir. The minister will see you straight away. Ah, if you'll excuse me. I'll arrange a car for you. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. We have to go home. I know my father better than anyone. He won't break his word to me. Yes, I know your father too, and it would be suicide. I told you he wants us back. He would never harm his own flesh and blood. Oh, come Sit on. Down. She's right. There's nothing for us here. We were all warned of the dangers of returning. Yeah, I think perhaps he does need me. He needs me. Of course he needs me. We followed our husbands for better or worse and believed my father would keep his word. My husband's defection had almost brought down the government. I knew he and his brother would be stripped of all authority and would have to win my father's trust again. We faced difficult times. But we would be together, the whole family reunited. What are you doing? We're going back to Oman. We can use the other car. You go to Baghdad if you want. Better to die in Iraq than rot in a Jordanian jail. <laughs> None of this was anything to do with me. This was all you. I know. I know. We are brothers. My fate is yours. Want to see our papers? No, Jen. Carry on. Welcome back. My husband had not just betrayed my father. He had also disgraced the tribe and would have to answer to them. But my father had always loved Hussein like a son. He would protect him.
Welcome home. What are you doing here? The president gave us his word. Then you've got nothing to worry about, have you? Disarming. The women and children are coming with us. No! You and your brother are staying here. No! 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 You're gonna come Daddy, with me, Daddy, Daddy, no. Wait, wait. All right, it's all right. You go with your uncle. You can... No! 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 Let's go! No! 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 Consider yourselves under house arrest. You, make sure they don't leave the room. Why have they got my husband? Welcome back. Answer me. You look exhausted. Come, sit down. I don't want to sit down. I want you to answer me. What were Uday and Ali Hassan doing waiting for us at the house? Ali Hassan is the head of the Kamel's tribe. But you gave your word. In writing, you said they wouldn't be harmed. The tribe must decide his fate. You can't let those butchers kill my husband. This is tribal justice. The president is above such things. You can still save him. Tell them. I can't. One word from you and they'll stop. You're going to let them murder him. If only he had come to me all those months ago. No. No, please. He had a choice. He had no choice. Can't you see? This is why we ran. It was you who started this madness. Everything I have done. I have done for my family. No, you pitted your family against each other, and you're surprised when they start tearing each other apart. Yeah, but please. What's this? Your divorce papers. No. You'd have those little ones grow up the children of a traitor. I won't sign them. You choose that man over me. I love him. You'll do your duty and sign these papers. You'll do it for me. You'll do it for your country. And you'll do it for your children. I see now who you really are. I'm your father. We're carved from the same stone. I'm nothing like you. I'm empty. I could not imagine that my father, who loves his daughter so, would turn them both into widows in one day. What kind of love would that be? According to what I have heard, none of the tribal elders agreed with what Ali Hassan did. You have company. Not me. You spare my family. They are innocent. Do what you want with me. Me. None of you are innocent.
end of the brutality of the regime of Saddam Hussein seems to know no bounds. I think that the brutality of this um, and the uh, whole way that they were welcomed and pardoned and murdered um, shows, I think, a great deal about the way Saddam Hussein believes that he deals with people. Ali Hassan al-Majid announced today that the al-Majid tribe had rid itself of the traitors Hussein and Saddam Kamel. It is wrong for a person who has given his life and his youth in the service of his country in so many, many ways to be described as a traitor. ...cancer which had to be cut out. With the death of the traitors, the tribe has restored its honor. That is all I will say. It is wrong. See the president Saddam Hussein and will never forgive those who betray him. There are many lies told about that time after our husbands died. That we were hidden away and no one wanted to see us because we were daughters who had disgraced their father. Of course this is untrue. There were many in the extended family who wanted to see us, but not out of sympathy. Some wanted to gloat. For others, it was simple curiosity. How could these girls carry on with their lives after what had happened to them? It was our decision. We didn't want to see anyone. Mum, it's good. No, your Aunt Rana is coming. I told you to get ready. I am ready. Well, go and wash your face. But, Mum, is Grandad coming? No. Go and wash your face and tell the others to get ready, too. They are ready. I knew Dad was waiting for me to reach out to him. Although we'd been home for six months, I wasn't ready to do so. So, boys, this dear Ferrari. Reckon's refusing to have anything to do with it. Uh, her husband was taken from her. Such things are not easily forgiven. It's an important day for little Ali. The tribe must be allowed to make reparations for his father's death. She won't want me there. Don't worry, Abba. I'll see to the arrangements. Good boy. My father always said his regime was not a monarchy. But we all understood that Uday was his heir apparent. And my son, the next in line. Today you get to sit on a throne and wear the robes of the tribe. Hey! <laughs> all the men of the tribe will give you money. You're the head of the family now. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I told you I didn't want this deal. It's for Ali, not you. Come on, us. You must eat something. I really don't want to. You must keep this your with my warmest wishes. Thank you, Ali. Ali had to learn what it meant to be born into Iraq's first family. As my father always said to his family, you are Iraqis. Whatever happens to the country should happen to you too. Since you have benefited from being in power, so must you endure both sides of the situation. Iraqi people are suffering, why should you not suffer too?
So you want pistachio, right? <laughs> Son of a prostitute. So sorry, Excellency. Can you save him? Although his left leg has been very badly damaged, the main area of concern is the pelvis. Can you save him? I hope so, but it will require a highly skilled surgeon. I know someone in Paris. I'll get him. My brother never fully recovered from his injuries. Neither did my father. The last time I saw my father was five days before the American invasion. Got here with you, my boy. I noticed he was watching me. He was filling his eyes with his daughter. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Ali. My boy. You take care of your mother. I'll try. The one. You have always been the wisest of my children. Goodbye, Yaba. We would never see each other again. My sister Rana and I, and our children, fled Baghdad as the first bombs fell. We barely escaped with our lives. People said I celebrated the evening my brothers were killed. Nothing could be further from the truth. For eight months, we had no word from my father. But then on December the 13th, 2003, we finally heard. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. This is a great day in Iraq's history. For decades, hundreds of thousands of you suffered at the hands of this cruel man. For decades, Saddam Hussein divided you citizens against each other. For decades, he threatened and attacked your neighbors. 
Those days are over forever. The medical examination proved that he had uh, uh, no injuries and he is in good health. They talked about him as though he were a monster, but all I saw was my father looking old and alone. As appointed by your daughter, Ragad, she'll be coordinating your defense. The Americans haven't given us much time. First, I need to cover any complaints you have about food and accommodation. Then on to our preparations for the trial. Many people are surprised I stood up for my father, that I chose to defend him. Now they call me Little Saddam. But I am my father's daughter, and that's all the world will ever let me be.